Color is important to art and draws the eye, thus many artists like to use bright colors in their work. But what if there was an artist whose art is characterized by the absence of color, yet still manages to draw the eyes of many people? The artist I'm talking about is Asling Four, artist of characters such as Irene, Alice, and Robin to name a few. Of the character roster, I could say that it's because Asling's characters lack color that they stand out from the pack, but there is so much more to Asling's amazing style than just a lack of color. Today, I will be going over those colors, character background composition, and overall style in this art style study. And using this, I will try and create a drawing in Asling's style. First, let's go over how chroma is used in Asling's works. For most pieces, Asling uses a very low chroma or low saturation yellow and orange, but for low value parts of the image, or as values decrease, this hue is shifted towards blue while maintaining this low chroma palette. Interspersed throughout, however, is high chroma or high saturation colors, in this case being purple. But if most of the image is brown, why are the colors not muddy but still interesting? Within Asling's grays are hidden low chroma blues and a few purples, which contribute to a more interesting palette because despite everything being so low saturated, it subtly contrasts with the yellow and orange hues. I also like how Asling's illustrations frame characters with backgrounds. There are so many intricate details present in both the animals and plants in many of Asling's works. And included is this sense of space stemming from the use of perspective. These works here have an almost cube-like framing, and the space is clearly defined. It looks like three-point perspective is used here. You can see that these lines in the background originate from these three general directions. Meanwhile, you can clearly see the two-point perspective used here. The vertical lines are parallel to each other, but these lines on the floor originate from these two points. Through this, a sense of space is achieved. This image really reminds me of a museum display, from the statuesque pose to the museum-like rails. It almost looks like the character is frozen in time, and the clear-cut edges reminds me of resin dioramas. Also, there is very little negative space, the details of the clouds and the rain making the image look very busy all around. The diorama-like framing is also present here. The character frames between planes of glass and again this 3D box. There is so many details, even the animals in the distance and the clouds working together to fill that space. It also reminds me of old animation cells where the background is separated from the character. Where there are no clouds nor animals, it seems that foliage is used to fill up the space. Finally, let's look at how Asling draws the character's hair, faces, and fingers. Many characters have hair with long strands that begin straight and end with a flick. The ponytail of this character also shows these flicks of hair. Another distinct feature are these eyes that almost look half open. To me, they read as tired looking, and the line's lower eye line adds to this look. These features are shown here as well. Finally, the fingers are also distinct to me as they are very long and skinny looking. They look pretty simplified as the tips are simple and boxy looking, and they lack the definition of joints. What I mean is that the silhouette of these fingers don't have that curve due to the finger joints and are instead rather straight. Keeping all these notes in mind, I then started my style recreation. So let's start the painting. First, I started with the background to establish the perspective and to situate the character in the space. The majority of you voted for La Pluma, a character from Arknights, so I wanted to place her in the environment from the game. I particularly liked these blue docks in the stages and I knew I wanted to use the waves to fill up the negative space, so I quickly sketched out this environment in the box. The initial goal was to make her gaze at the viewer but have a hand over her head to keep the sun out of her eyes. However, you'll see just how many iterations I made of that sketch, simply because I didn't feel like looking for photo references. Only after I was finished with the entire piece did I realize that I could have just used Clip Studio Paint's 3D model as reference, but I think I was too excited to get to drawing. You can see that I had a lot of trouble because I was being dumb and just winging it, but I think you can just use a 3D model or a photo reference to make it much easier for yourself. Otherwise, you're gonna end up just wasting a lot of time like me. I quickly changed it to La Pluma holding her walkie-talkie in her left and looking up like a lookout. Once the initial sketch was done, I did the line art, not forgetting the sleepy eyes and the straight and then flick of the hair. I decided to go back to my initial painting method, which I usually use, which is doing a rough line art, blocking in the colors, and then painting over all the line art and colors over top. Using this method, I don't have to make the line art complete, 
since I know that I'm just going to cover a lot of it up. I really enjoy this painting method, probably because it feels more free. It reminds me of how fun painting in the Liduk style was, because I didn't have to worry about the small details. Or maybe that's just me having a hard time with line art. You can see here, again, my trouble with the arm, and the underarm. I think the hand was too high to cover her eyes from the sun, so now it looks more like she's slicking back her hair. I did try and angle the light to make it work, but it gave me much more trouble than it was worth. Later on, the shadow really messed up my study of Asling's hairstyle. I redrew the box with the cemetery ruler and then got to the details in the character outfit. You can see here there are a lot of buckles and pockets, but I focused a lot and found that scribbling these details was a lot of fun. It's like when you're in class doodling on your pages, filling up the space as uniformly as possible. The details on the shoe were similarly satisfying, but of course, I had to use a little bit more brain cells trying to fit the perspective, since one shoe is facing head-on versus being viewed sideways. And here is the start of coloring. I placed a layer below the line art to get the overall coverage of the area, and then added a layer on top, both the initial coloring and line art, to get that painterly feeling. Pretty simple layer organization. As you can see in the lower left, I used very muted warm colors for this. The hair was most definitely too light here, but I was trying to emulate Asling's strands. You can see that there are many groupings of light highlights near the top of the hair, so I tried the same with this character, only the color I used was too light. I tried fixing it with color balance, but later on, I fully darkened the hair in an attempt to make it look more like the initial character. Here is when I switched to focusing on the arm. I wanted to further define the harsh shadow, so I used a pretty dark and bold color. I used a hard brush at half opacity to soften the edges of shadow, but not the soft brush, simply because it gives me more control over the gradient. I then lightened a few more places with saturated orange, just so it wasn't too muddy. Most of the outfit was grays and blacks, so again I used the low chroma oranges. But with the shadows, I experimented with low chroma blues. I was staring at the textures of Aslan's characters when I realized that the roughish textures of the legs here could be made with a default mechanical pencil brush, so I used it for the rough shadows on the clothing. Of course, looking at it now, I can see that Aslan actually used this stripe brush instead, but I do like that rough pencil look I made by accident. I also chose green to be that bright saturated accent color. I changed the hair color with the color balance and then continued coloring the accessories with the same colors. And I used both the hard brush and the mechanical pencil brush to paint the shadows on the legs. I knew both the left leg and arm was further away from the light and thus in shadow, so you can see the base color I used was still the desaturated orange, just a little bit lower in value. I noticed that in Asling's works, the limbs extending into the background, or the limbs that are not the focus of the image, changes color to match that background, kind of to artificially create depth. I knew that the dock was going to be blue in color, so I used the pencil brush to blend the distant leg and arm into blue to make that same effect. I finished the shoes, not forgetting to make that distant shoe blue as well, and I placed down some rough colors for the background, before remembering to draw a few more of the character accessories. Since it looked less like the character was keeping the sun out of her eyes, and more that she was keeping her hair down in the wind, I drew this ribbon that she usually has in her hair as if it fell off in the wind. I again experimented with the colors of the backgrounds, but I felt they were too bright for an Asling drawing, so I adjusted them again to be less saturated. I made sure to fill up the space with as many waves and clouds as possible. I did have a hope to draw birds, but later I didn't have enough time, so I took it out. I refined the dock with line art. Again, perspective is a pain. The rule I followed for this was that for the lines going to the right, there was an imaginary point leading these lines to converge, as well as to the left and to the bottom. However, I was just using trial and error, basically fixing it until the lines looked right. I think it would be much easier to just use a perspective grid. You'd save a lot more time and headaches aligning things. Anyways, I used the lasso fill tool to block in the dock colors and then used a variety of brushes such as this stripe brush and the mechanical brush to add texture with a low saturation orange. For the shadows such as this character shadow, I blocked it in with the lasso fill tool, then used a soft brush to lighten the area of shadow closest to the source of light, and then softened the edges with a half opacity hard brush. 
I used the same principle with the C. To block in the C, I used a soft brush to lighten the area closest to the light, and then darkened the area away from the light. For the shadow below the dock, I duplicated the coloring layer I used for the dock, and then changed the color and shifted it lower. For the waves, again, I used the lasso fill tool to quickly draw them. Basically, to draw simple waves, you need to draw these dark areas to define the troughs of the waves by following a wobbly, invisible grid. At these corners of the invisible grid, draw these almost triangle diamond shapes with a dark color. Then follow these edges of the grid to define the crests of the waves, or the top bits that catch the light. Around the dock poles, I drew these concentric circles, since waves are made when water bounces back from the object. When the waves were done, I duplicated them using blurred in an attempt to soften the edges. I didn't use this pattern to draw the waves in the back, simply because I wanted to make a semicircle lighting pattern. But again, the look of waves changes depending on the lighting, so it's best to get a reference photo. The reason why my waves don't look too realistic is because, again, I wasn't using a reference. But I was just having fun with it, so it's not all bad. For the clouds, I wanted that smooth, unrealistic, stylized cloud look, so I experimented with the colors. But I adjusted it back to white clouds eventually, because although I wanted it to fill the space, I didn't want them to stick out too much. I used a soft brush and color dodge to brighten those highlights. And then, I filled the negative space of the sea while softening the edges of the waves with a half-opacity hard brush. What really bothered me about this painting was that while I did try and envision Asling's style, I think I sacrificed character likeness for conforming to the style. While I do think the eyes and hair do look like they belong to an Asling character, the character I'm drawing has more cute and lively eyes, and her hair is more wispy with more strands. While Asling's characters have a cute sleepy vibe, La Pluma has a different kind of cuteness that I failed to capture. She has a much more soft, cheerful feeling, which is almost absent due to the muted and low chroma color scheme, not only in the clothes and background, but in the skin as well. I view these paintings not only as an analysis or study, but more of a challenge for me, so I didn't want to deviate from what I viewed to be closest to Asling's style. But if this wasn't an art style challenge, I think an easy way to make it look more like La Pluma is to add more saturation to the skin, soften the harsh shadows, and to add more curves to the silhouette. Personally, I don't do any pre-sketches or practices other than what I put in my YouTube videos, so I write my notes and then whatever you see in this video is my practice from start to finish. Back when I started watching art videos, I always looked up to artists who posted their speed paints, but what I noticed was that many at that time didn't post the sketching process from a blank page, and I always wondered why. I felt really discouraged at that time because the only people who did post the sketching phase seemed to create amazing line art out of thin air. Meanwhile, I was meandering everywhere. But when you create a video, it kind of becomes a performance in a sense, so you don't want to show the ugly parts of the performance. I think for people like me who start with a really ugly stage, they don't want to show the ugly parts where we're unsure of how it's going to turn out. So they cut off that part of the speed paint and just go on to the coloring portion. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I create the videos that I want to see for myself, so that's why I don't do any preliminary sketches. It's also why my studies are just one finished piece with all of my mistakes in them, and comments on what I would do if I did this again to make it easier for myself. Of course, I'd be lying if I said that showing these mistakes didn't make me self-conscious, but um, I feel happy when I read a lot of your nice comments saying the video is helpful in some way, or at least entertaining in a sense. Anyways, the speed paint is almost done. Last minute, I changed my mind and took out the clouds since it looked a little bit too crowded for me. But here's the final piece. If I did this again, I would again use more references, but I do like the overall dreary atmosphere due to the muted colors. It kind of makes this oppressive vibe, like the calm before the storm. Anyways, maybe I'll do a study on an artist with brighter colors next time. See ya!